PCR is widely used to determine and amplify a gene. After the amplification or without amplification of gene of interest, we digest it with restriction enzymes and ligate it into a new vector. To determine the presence and quality of a gene of interest, we perform a lateral gel electrophoresis. The polymerase chain reaction, PCR, is a scientific technique for amplifying DNA sequences in utero by separating the DNA into two strands and incubating it with oligonucleotide primers and DNA polymerase. In the PCR, we use template DNA which will be amplified during the PCR reaction. Primers are the short pieces of single-stranded DNA that are complementary to the three prime ends of each of the sense and antisense strands of the DNA target. Deoxynucleoside 3-phosphates, the NTPs, are nucleotides containing triphosphate groups. These are the bleeding blocks from which the DNA polymerase synthesizes a new DNA strand. It contains equal amounts of each nucleotide, the ATP, DTTP, DCTP, and DGTP. The reaction has three steps, denaturation, annealing, and elongation. In the denaturation part, double-stranded DNA is denaturated and the double chain opens. Before the denaturation part, we have initialization. 95 degrees Celsius for 3 minutes to activate DNA polymerase and the denaturation of the contaminants. In the denaturation, hydrogen bonds between complementary nucleotides gets broken, thus the chain gets opened. The step is run at 95 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds. In the annealing part, the primers are annealed to the five prime ends of the open chain to their complementary sequences. Annealing temperature is defined by the melting point of the complementary chain, and it varies. Elongation is the part that target DNA is amplified with the help of tag DNA polymerase and nucleotides are added to the growing chain one by one. The temperature for the elongation is 72 degrees, and the time varies depending on the length of the amplicon and typically defined as 1 minute per kilobase. Denaturation, annealing, and elongation steps are usually repeated 20 to 40 times. After the elongation, there is also a final elongation part to ensure remaining DNA strands are fully extended. This process is usually conducted at 72 degrees Celsius for 5 minutes. PCR is commonly used in many research labs and it also has various practical applications in forensics, genetic testing, and diagnostics. For instance, PCR is used to amplify genes associated with genetic disorders from the DNA of patients. PCR can also be used to test for the presence of a bacterium or a virus in the patient's body. If the pathogen is present, it may be possible to amplify regions of its DNA from a blood or a tissue sample. PCR also has applications in food and agriculture industries, microbiology, and phylogenetic studies. Kits for the polymerase chain reaction generally compose of the NTP mixture, potassium chloride containing buffer, magnesium chloride, and TAC polymerase. Buffer solution provides a suitable chemical environment for optimum activity and stability of the TAC DNA polymerase. Buffers include potassium chloride and they improve the PCR amplification of DNA fragments. Magnesium is a required cofactor for thermostable DNA polymerase and it is important for the control of specificity of the reaction. Lastly, TAC polymerase is the heat-stable enzyme that is responsible for the amplification of DNA fragments by the addition of nucleotides. So let's continue with how to prepare a master mix. Here we show the preparation of 10 reaction master mix which we add all the components except for primers, template DNA and PCR grade water. For the master mix, we add 10x TAC buffer, 10 micromolar DNTP mixture, 25 micromolar magnesium chloride and lastly the TAC DNA polymerase. Once prepared, this mixture will speed up setting a new PCR reaction by saving time that goes to pipetting. This mix can be stored up to 2 weeks at minus 20 degrees Celsius.
Now we will prepare PCR mix for 4x reaction and later divide them into 4. This strategy can enhance the number of PCR copy that we can use for further studies. First, we add template and PCR grade water, time micromolar forward primer, and time micromolar reverse primer. Lastly, we add the master mix that we prepared earlier. Mix well and divide them into four tubes and place them into thermal cycler. In the program, we set the annealing temperature at 59 degrees Celsius for our primers, and we set the elongation time to 42 seconds, as our PCR amplicon is around 700 base pairs. Then we set the multiplication step as 30x. We change our volume from 30 microliter to 50 microliter, and we set the storage time to 4 degrees Celsius. Then we press run, select the idle chamber, then start the program. We first close the lid and wait until the sample temperature reaches to 95 degrees Celsius. When the temperature reaches to 95, we place our sample to the thermocycler and close the lid. Restriction enzymes simply are proteins that can cut DNA at specific sites. Restriction enzymes, also known as restriction endonucleases, recognize specific sequences of DNA base pairs and cut or chemically separate DNA at that specific arrangement of base pairs. Main restriction enzymes leave a short length of unpaired bases called a sticky end or cohesive end at the DNA site where they cut, whereas other restriction enzymes make a cut across both strands creating double-stranded DNA fragments with blunt ends. In general, restriction sites are palindromic, meaning that the sequence of bases reads the same forwards as it does backwards on the opposite DNA strand. In a typical restriction kit, we obtain a restriction enzyme, a buffer, and usually a DNA loading dye. Buffer creates the optimum environment for restriction enzymes to digest properly. Here is the outline of the restriction digestion protocol. The concentration of sample DNA is determined by a nanodrop in nanograms per microliter. We need 1 microgram DNA for a single restriction reaction, so necessary calculations must be done to put correct amount of DNA into reaction mixture. After we add all components, we incubate the mix at 37 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. First we add nucleus-free water, then DNA. The volume of DNA is calculated as described before. We add CutSmart buffer which generates highly conserved environment for enzyme to function properly. Each enzyme has its own buffer. We add restriction enzyme at the last. We can use different restriction enzymes for proper cloning of our gene of interest and vector. Gel electrophoresis is a standard lab procedure for separating DNA by size, for visualization and purification. Electrophoresis used in an electrical field to move the negatively charged DNA through an agarose gel matrix toward a positive electrode. Shorter DNA fragments migrate through the gel more quickly than the larger ones. Thus, you can determine the approximate length of a DNA fragment by running it on an agarose gel alongside with the DNA letter. The DNA letter is a collection of DNA fragments of known lengths. Electrophoresis system composed of 1x TAE buffer. This buffer contains tris, a strong base, and acetic acid in order to maintain pH and provide ions for conductivity. EDTA is a chelating agent and it inactivates any DNA's enzyme which can be present in the experimental setting. Electrophoretic grade agar helps to establish a solid gel for the separation of DNA according to its size and length. 
Electrophoretic systems consist of a tank, a power supply, a comb, casting dams, a gel tray, and a lid. Ethidium bromide is a highly toxic chemical that binds to the double-stranded DNA and allows you to visualize DNA under UV light. It is very cheap compared to other DNA binding dyes, such as gel red. For the preparation of 1x TAE buffer, we first prepare 10x TAE, then dilute to 1x. For this, we need to measure 48.5 grams of trace hydrochloric acid, 11.4 ml glacial acetic acid, and 20 ml EDTA solution, and then the solution is completed to 1 liter with distilled water. Weigh the electrophoretic grade agar as 0.8 gram and dissolve it in 80 ml 1x TAE to obtain 1% weight per volume agar solution. Boil the mixture in the microwave about 1 to 2 minutes until the agar is completely dissolved. After the microwave, check the solution to make sure that you don't see any agar particles inside the solution. Cool down agar for 1 minute by gently stirring the flask under the cold water. Make sure that agar is not solidified during the process. Place the gel tray to the gel casting mold. Place the casting dam to the end of the tray. Place the comb, which will create wells for sample loading. Put a heavy weight on top of the gel tray and make sure that it is not moving and the solution does not leak. Add 4 microliter of ethidium bromide solution to the gel mix. Remember that it is highly toxic, so be careful while handling the ethidium bromide. Mix with agar and avoid bubbles by a gentle swirl. Pour the solution to the gel cast and let it cool to solidify for at least 20 minutes. Take the lid of the system off and fill it up with 1x TAE buffer. As the salt in the TAE may precipitate, swirl the buffer before filling in. Pour until you reach the level of the gel cast holder. Remove the gel cast from gel casting cascade. Clean it with the tissue to remove excess agar. Place the gel into the tank and fill the tank with 1x TAE until the gel is completely under the buffer. Make sure that there are not any bubbles on the gel. Here we use 6x gel loading dye. When we mix 10 microliter of dye with 50 microliter PCR mixture, we will get 1x final mixture. The dye is added to the sample of DNA prior to electrophoresis in order to increase the viscosity of the sample, which will prevent it from floating out of the cells and so that the migration of the sample through the gel can be seen. First, we load the DNA letter, which composes of parts of DNA with various size and concentrations. Here we use NEB Quick Load Purple 1KB Plus DNA letter for reference. Then, start loading the sample from bottom of the well to the top. These wells can take up to 50 microliter of the sample. After loading, close the lid of the tank and turn on the power supply. Set the time of the run as well as the voltage of the run and then press run. If everything is up and running, you should be able to see bubbles going up inside the tank. After a complete run, remove the lid and observe the presence of the bands with bare eyes. Then turn off the power supply and take the gel to visualize DNA bands under UV light.
Put the gel by removing the cast gently. Place the UV shield and turn on the UV light. Observe your bands. Here we use 1 KB letter, which indicates that our four PCR products are between 1000 base pair and 500 base pair, and the other is around 1500 base pair. 